Welcome back to this Blender for Beginners tutorial series. In the last video, we covered the interface and how to get around. In this video, we'll continue with the interface in regards to manipulating objects in 3D space. This is the 3D viewport. It exists in three dimensions. X, or width, is shown in red. Y, or depth, is green. Z, which is height or altitude, is blue. We can move our view around the viewport by using our middle mouse button with the mouse. Click and hold the middle mouse button while moving the mouse to orbit. Add shift to the same action to pan. Scrolling the mouse wheel zooms in and out. Right click to show the context menu. Shift right click to place the 3D cursor. We can change the display mode of the viewport by selecting the corresponding buttons across the top or by pressing Z and clicking the desired mode. You can also press Z and tap the number on the number pad that is next to your selection. In order to transform or edit an object, you will need to select it first. There are many ways to select an object or elements within them. The few most commonly used are simply to left-click the object you want, or left-click and drag around one or more objects. Lasso and circle select are also useful and we will cover these when we cover edit mode. You can explore the various selection modes by clicking and holding the selection button in the tools menu. If you do not see the tools menu, the T key will hide or show it. Clicking and dragging the right edge will resize it. The most basic level of manipulation that will apply to everything you do in Blender are the three transform modes of translate or move, Rotate and Scale. Select an object and press G to move it with your mouse. R to rotate or S to scale. We are able to constrain any transform to an axis by starting a transform and tapping the letter of the axis on which to perform it. For instance, if I want to move or translate this cube along the x-axis, I would select the cube, tap G for translate, the x, and move my mouse. Left click to complete the action. This is the same for all three transforms. We can scale and rotate along a single axis as well. What if we need to transform an object on two of the three axes at once? The process is the same, except that rather than specify the axis to transform on, we hit shift and the axis to exclude. In order to move this cube around on the XY plane, I select the cube, tap G, shift Z, and move my mouse. Left click to complete the action. One more important thing to know about transforms is the difference between global and local coordinates. Put simply, global coordinates are those of the world that applies to everything in it. The red, green, and blue lines you see in the viewport are the global X, Y, and Z axes. What if we have rotated an object and want to transform it along what was the Z before rotating? For that, we would transform it along the local z-axis of that object. Let's use the cube again to demonstrate. Here I have rotated the cube, and I want to move it along its local z. To do so, I perform the same steps as before. Select, hit G for translate. Now, I double tap z, move the mouse, and click to complete. We can further control our transform functions by changing the pivot point. The pivot point is the point in 3D space to which our transforms refer. The pivot point only affects rotation and scale. Rotation transforms rotate around it. Scale transforms scale away from or toward it. The pivot point types can be found here. By default, the pivot point is the origin of the selected object or the midpoint between the origins of multiple selected objects. The origin point of an object is indicated by the yellow dot seen when the object is selected. Bounding box pivot. 
A bounding box is an imaginary 3D rectangle around an object that represents its furthest extents. Setting the bounding box as your pivot point will use the 3D center of that box. 3D cursor will of course use the 3D cursor as the pivot point. Individual origins will do just that. When selecting multiple objects, they can be transformed along their individual origins rather than all around a single point. Active element refers to something we have not touched on yet. There is always an active element when selecting multiple objects or elements. The active element is the one highlighted in yellow while the rest are orange. If you have selected multiple objects and you want to change the active one, simply shift left click on one to make it active. Of course, we do not just want to eyeball our transforms all the time. Many times we want precise measurements, such as moving so many meters, rotating so many degrees, or scaling by this percentage. To do this, simply type the measurement instead of moving the mouse before left-clicking to complete an operation. When translating, type whole numbers for meters, or decimals for anything smaller. When rotating, the numbers you type represent degrees. Numbers typed when scaling are like fractions. 2 makes the object 2 times bigger, or 200%, while 0.2 would scale the object down to 2 tenths, or 20%. Transform values can be typed in the sidebar menu. This menu is shown or hidden using the N key. When typing here, you can use math functions as well. Say you want to rotate an object one-fifth of a full rotation on the z-axis. Maybe you don't know how many degrees that would be. No problem, just type 360 divided by 5 in the z-rotation field. Great, now we know how to navigate the viewport, and we can move, rotate, and scale objects. But what about mesh data? How do we actually manipulate what is inside of an object? For that, we need to leave object mode and enter edit mode. The tab key will enter edit mode for the mesh object you have selected. Pressing it again will take you back to object mode. A mesh is made up of three elements, the first of which is the vertex. Vertices are simply points in space with x, y, and z coordinates. They do not actually take up space. A vertex is just a point. Tap the 1 key at the top of your keyboard while in edit mode to enter vertex selection. The second type of element is edges. A line between any two vertices is an edge. Tap the 2 key at the top of your keyboard while in edit mode to enter edge selection. Finally, the space between three or more vertices and edges when filled is a face. Tapping 3 at the top of your keyboard while in edit mode will enter face selection. All of these elements can be manipulated in the same ways as objects, with the exception of vertices. They can simply be moved. Another common selection method, while in any of these selection modes, is to tap Control and plus or minus. This will expand or reduce your current selection. Lastly, Control L will select all elements that are connected to your current selection. We have a few more selection types in edit mode that will allow us to select what we want in a complex mesh. The first two are some of the most commonly used, loop select and ring select. An edge loop is just a bunch of edges that connect end to end. The first and last do not necessarily need to meet as the term may actually suggest. Hold Alt when clicking an edge to select the connected edge loop. An edge ring is a bunch of edges that are parallel to each other, sharing a face between them. Control Alt while clicking an edge will select a ring. It will also select the faces between them if you are in vertex selection mode. Finally, Select All and Select None are two selection methods you will use all of the time. This method works in both edit and object modes. Pressing A will select all. Alt A will select none. And that's it for the interface. It's time to move on to something more practical.
like this bathroom interior scene. So let's move on to the next video and get started. Hey guys, if you found this video useful, hit like and consider subscribing to the channel. And you can turn on that notification bell too so that you don't miss future videos. Until next time, I'm Carl with Blender Forge.